Hello guys, it's Ranho, back with another video. Today we have the iFi Go Bar Kensei. This thing is a super, super versatile device that has so many features, but this has the highlight ability to upscale your music and make it sound closer to like the studio master recording, which is really, really cool. But beyond just that, this thing actually has, you know, really, really nice build quality. This has stainless steel. It's supposed to be a reminder you of like a katana or like samurai sword essentially, which is kind of cool because this finish on this is really nice. And then it comes with this actual like wooden box. So the whole entire like unboxing experience is really good and the packaging is really nice. But beyond just all of that, it actually sounds really good. I think this is definitely one of the DAC camps that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy. The versatility on this is just insane. You have X space, which is the base boost. You have cross feed. You have the new K2 HD as well. So this really has the like a lot of just different ways to use it. It also has different filters. So I think this is going to be a very interesting product. I think it's one of the best sounding products, but I do want to spend some time describing the upscaling technology on this, which is called the K2 HD, right? And that thing is, it's kind of interesting. It's like a double-edged sword in a sense of like, it is very good in the sense of like, if you're listening to CD quality music, or you're listening to like Spotify, which is slightly compressed the CD quality, then it's supposed to upscale the file into sounding a little bit more like, get some more detail, which it kind of does on the treble, but at the same time, it's a little bit more subtle. I can hear, I can like feel like a lot of people might listen to this and not hear much of a difference. I'm using my Diana MR, which is my most detailed headphone I have. And I would say the differences are small, but they are there. But besides that, this is actually based on the assumption that you're listening to compressed music. And so in the sense that the K2HD is only useful if you're listening to compressed music versus if you're just listening straight to lossless music, so you're using like Apple Music, which they have lossless music, then really this isn't really that useful because the quality off the lossless is better than the upscale version based off of the compressed music, if that makes any sense. And so for me, I wouldn't buy this for the K2HD feature of upscaling. I would buy this based off of how good it sounds. Like if you're listening to this directly through lossless, it sounds amazing. So that's what I would go. So I feel like seasoned audio files who have, you know, better streaming service or they have their own digital music that's already in the best quality will not care about the K2HD, but there is a use case scenario if you're like on the go, you're kind of streaming through Spotify, you can't really stream, you know, lossless music because that's a lot of data rate and your phone plan might not be that high or the connection might not be that good because that's kind of the real world that we live in. So there are actually use case scenarios, but if you're just looking for the best quality music, then lossless music is just the way to go over using Upscaler, right? Anyways, I wanna thank iFi for saying this out for review. I will leave links in the description below. If you guys are interested in purchasing, it does help support my channel if you use those links down below. Anyways, let's talk about this in more detail. All right, let's unbox the GoBar Kensai. Whatever, I don't know how they say it. Ooh, it's out. It's Japanese. I guess you get a nice box. This is kind of sick. I've never seen this. Maybe this is one of the reasons why it costs more. I'll roll this out. <laughs> wow, this is a definitely a different unboxing experience. I guess it gives you that Japanese vibe to it. I kind of dig it. It's honestly really cool. I mean, kind of look at this. It has like the lettering and some like engravings. That's pretty cool, honestly. Then, you know, the go bar. Oh, this is much cooler than I expected. It has this like, just this metal brush finish. Very shiny. It's like just uncoated, it looks like. Just like pure metal. That is kind of sick. I can see why they kind of made allusions to like a sword. I guess it does remind me of like a shiny kind of steel. Back here we have, I guess, a case. Get this little case for your little go bar. You get these two cables. So you get a USB type C to C with an adapter to a USB type A. 
And then you get the good old lightning cable that got abandoned in 2023, but you know, if you have an older iPhone, you can still use it. If you take a closer look at this, you get all the controls you kind of need. So, you know, walking guys through it really, you get 4.4, um, off and 3.5 for IE match that so you have, you know, more sensitive IEMs. So you can put that on if you need that. And then we have the volume so you can increase and decrease your volume. And then over here we have the kind of mode button so you can change through different filters and get through your X space and X space through pushing this button. And over here we have the ports. So we have the 4.4 Pentacon and the 3.5 millimeter. So you have balanced connection and single ended. So moving to the back, you can kind of see all the options that they have little LEDs that kind of tell you what's on. So you got PCM, you have your K2 HD, which is, you know, the upsampling or upscaling, I should say, MQA, X space and X space. Overall, this device really does have so many different functions because like I said, you have your X space, which kind of increases the cross feed so you can get more like a speaker like presentation. You have the X space if you want to use it for, you know, more bass. And I think it definitely increases the low end a lot. So a lot of open back headphones have like a rolled off bass. So using that X space is really good. You have your K2 HD that you can use to basically, you know, upsample your kind of more CD quality music or like, you know, your Spotify compressed music. So really the kind of options you have are pretty much endless. You can also have an option to, if you hold down this button, you can actually change the filters. So it actually has four different filters as well. My favorite filter being the GTO filter. And I think it's the most detailed filter. Minimum phase is also another one. Sometimes the GTO filter can get a little much and you know, the minimum phase is the other one you can use. There's also bit perfect and standard. I'm not the biggest fan of standard. I think it's a little too like smooth for me but the um, standard is also an option that you can use. So really there's a lot of things to play with with this device and all these options in such a small compact device that's honestly built really well and the buttons are really tidy. So really this thing puts out a lot of work. And of course the actual power output of this thing is 477. I think it's like two watts more than the, pre the previous one. So not much better improvement over the prior, but it definitely does have a little bit more power. But at that much power, really, you, there's basically no headphone you can't run off of this, so it's really, really good. All right, so let's talk about sound. So for the sound of this device, I tested it using these headphones with Diana MR and in different scenarios, but basically I listened to it on Spotify, then I would activate the K2 HD, which is an upscaler, and then listen to it afterwards and see if there's an improvement, which there was. And then I also compared that to just listening to straight up the lossless file off of Spotify. So I was listening to City of Stars from the La La Land soundtrack, and I was listening to that song doing these comparisons. I mean, one of the interesting things about that is like, Emma Stone is like really, really good voice in that song. And you can definitely tell the difference between Lossless, which her voice comes out really detailed, very forward, and the background, everything, all the details are so much more just vibrant versus when you're listening to just Spotify by itself, it sounds very rounded. All the kind of details kind of blend more together and they're not separated. It's not as dynamic. It does not, doesn't extend as like high. The transient response is as good. Essentially, you can kind of hear all of that. I feel like when you turn on the K2 HD, it actually does increase the perception of like, I guess the transient response, like the trouble, you can feel like it sounds higher and the voices sound a little bit more separated from the background. I felt like it actually did kind of enhance it a little bit more, but I didn't think it enhanced it to the degree of being as good as a lossless version. So somewhere in between. So I would say the K2HD actually does work on this device. So that's kind of cool. If you're looking for that like middle ground, I think that is pretty cool for this device, right? When it comes to like comparing this to like other things that I've tried. So I have the iFi Go Link, which is the kind of the cheaper one. I put this next to next to this one. And really what I heard was that, you know, you can definitely hear just, I feel like the trouble is somewhere where you can always hear the quality. The Go Link just sounds a lot more kind of smooth and a little bit more rolled in comparison. It just extends a lot higher on this device. One of the things that I noticed a lot too, on better DAC amps is that the sound stage is a little bigger. The other thing is that when it comes to kind of like all the elements in the song, so like the foreground, the background, so that the singer's like in the middle and all the instruments are around them. And then there's like multiple, you know, 
male, female vocals. They're just separated a lot better on better DAC amps. And you can really hear that on this one. Like I've been testing a lot of these dongle DACs recently, and this is definitely the best one by a mile. Like this thing is so good. It's kind of crazy. And it's all in this small little package is what's pretty crazy about it. And it puts out, you know, all the power of 477 milliwatts, which is an improvement over its predecessor, right? So really this device really does sound that good. I think this is a device that I'm easily gonna recommend. And like I said, I wouldn't buy it for the K2 HD, I'd buy it because it just sounds really that good. So one of the things that people are gonna consider was, you know, is this device worth it over the original Go Bar that is $100 cheaper? And my honest opinion is that if you're a hardcore audiophile, if you don't buy this one, you're gonna always wonder and buy the cheaper one, always wonder why you didn't buy this one and you'll probably eventually upgrade anyways. I do think this one sounds really that good, so I probably would go for this one. If you want the best value, then the original Go Bar honestly sounds really good and I would probably just go for that if you don't want to spend that kind of amount of cash on this one. Obviously the improvements you're getting is, you know, I think it has a better capacitor, it has a lower jitter clock, but even then the build and obviously the box, all this stuff costs more money as well. So you're getting more for your money but you know, it's probably not the most value packed. If you want that, you would just go for the cheaper older one, right? In my conclusion, really, I do think this is a device that's really worth buying. I think this is really, really good sounding device. This is one of my favorite portable DAC amps I've ever heard. So this one's definitely going high on my list of recommendations. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Please like and subscribe down below helps my videos out. I have, you know, other reviews of the old iFi Go bar if you were curious. The Griffin, I basically have reviewed every single product by iFi, so I'm very well familiar with all their stuff. And yeah, anyways, I hope this video is helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.